One of the big questions circling the internet right now is whether or not it's going to be worth buying a 3070, 3080, or 3090 on an older platform with an older processor. And the argument being made is that there's going to be a huge bottleneck. So let's actually see how much of a bottleneck there is generationally between CPUs, GPUs, and different versions of PCI Express. To do that, we're going to need some help. This is the Antec 900 case. On the inside, we've got a Striker 2 Extreme motherboard from ASUS, and we've got an old QX9650 CPU from Intel. It's a quad-core extreme, factory 3 gigahertz, and we're going to overclock it to 4 gigahertz to kind of try to level the playing field versus my 6700K. Now the 6700K is going to have a, a larger advantage because it's overclocked to 4.6 gigahertz, and we're going to let it have that advantage to see just how bottlenecked my 980 Ti would be going back a couple generations. So the things to note is that this motherboard is PCI Express 2.0, not PCI Express 3.0. So this should be a wonderful example of just how bottlenecked a GPU should be going to an older platform and an older CPU. We'll be using some synthetic benchmarks today, as well as uh, checking some games to see how the frames per second perform uh, putting the 980 Ti into an old system. If bottlenecking really is as bad an issue as people are saying it is, then putting the 980 Ti in here should basically result in abysmal performance. Let's find out. This will be the first time that I've turned on the QX9650 system in over six years. So we've dusted it off, we've put in the 980 Ti, let's see if it powers on. Now it doesn't have an operating system installed yet. We'll have to put that back on. Come on, power up. So we've got no video. We're gonna have to do some troubleshooting. All right, so I found the problem. Uh, it was just the RAM. So the RAM just needed to be reseated. The computer had been off for a long time, so the RAM timings were lost. So I just had to pull out all except for one stick of RAM power it back up and get it running again. So we're at 3.83 gigahertz now. So let's take it a step further. Let's, of course we haven't stability tested this yet, but let's take it a step further. Let's go and we're gonna increase this to a multiplier of 12. And we'll take it from 12, we'll go 3.4 volts at a multiplier of 12. And we'll see if we can boot into the BIOS. Uh, and then of course we'll push it into the OS and see if it's stable or not, increase the voltage a little bit, and then see where we land. So if we look at the results, we can actually see the graphics score with the 6700K the graphics score is only 0.3% higher. The frames per second is actually, get this, higher by 0.1% for graphics test one on TimeSpy. If we look at our graphics test two, the 6700K only scored 0.7% higher than the QX9650. So the CPU test obviously destroyed the QX9650. The CPU test showed a 245.7% higher score than the QX9650. So the QX9650 was released in 2007. And as far as running the 980 Ti, it's actually doing quite well. Now real world performance in higher end games certainly won't be that good on a QX9650, but it's proven that the graphics card can provide just as much output um, now this is a th synthetic test, so you don't have AI, you don't have all these other things going on in the background in your games, um, but really it's not the CPU that's bottlenecking you, it's some of the higher more advanced features of some of the games. So to say that it's not worth it to get a 3070 RTX to pair it with an older CPU, I don't believe that. If you've got a 6700K and you were to go from an older generation card like a 980 Ti up to a 3070 or a 3080, you're still going to see some advantages. Um, you may have a little bit of bottlenecks in some AAA title games, uh, but overall it's not like you're just going to all of a sudden cap out and not get the performance out of your GPU that you would normally get. 
So what we're gonna do next is we'll load up a game. Let's actually see if this can play a modern title and what kind of frame rate we can get, uh, just comparative to a 6700K. So in order to test the 980 in a real world scenario, I've decided to uh, try out Rebel Galaxy. I wanted to play Horizon Zero Dawn, but because the QX9650 doesn't come with AVX instructions, Horizon Zero Dawn won't run. It just crashes upon launch. Um, I tried an AVX emulator, that didn't work either. So we're gonna have to go to something a little different. Okay, so with Adaptive Sync turned off, we're still getting 90 frames per second. So 80 to 90 frames per second at 1440p. So this is completely and totally playable and honestly, I'm not really seeing a difference playing this between the QX9650 and the 6700K. It pretty much is 100% playable. It looks identical to any other time I've played this on uh, the 6700K. And this is a PCI Express 2.0, an old system, QX9650, uh, QX9650 processor and everything is smooth as butter. So now we're trying Rebel Galaxy on the 6700K, and the very first thing we notice is that we're hitting about 200 to 220 frames per second, depending on what's around us. So we can see that the graphics card is definitely not able to produce as many frames per second, but we have a lot of things to take into consideration here. We went from PCI Express 2 to PCI Express 3, which increases our bandwidth quite substantially. Uh, and then the CPU itself, uh, the 6700K is 250% better than the QX9650. So there's a huge gap in performance between the QX9650 and the 6700K. So one of the interesting things that we found is that in synthetic benchmarks, the 980 Ti performs just as well in the QX9650 system as it does with the 6700K. Um, but we have seen that when you get into the actual game engines, the performance does change. So while the graphics card may be able to achieve the same or, or just as good synthetic benchmark, you will see a different performance level uh, when you actually get into gaming. All things considered, when it comes to the synthetic benchmark, we only saw a difference of about 0.1 to 0.5% uh, in the graphics score and the graphics tests. So where is the gap? Well, the biggest gap is in CPU performance, obviously. So what does all this mean? Well, we took an extreme example. A QX9650 is extremely slow compared to 6700K, and we put it on a very old architecture. So the GPU was basically being held back by PCI Express 2.0, as well as uh, an aging CPU. What does all this mean? Well, in an extreme case, if you have a really old CPU that was a low-end CPU to begin with, uh, yeah, the 3070, 3080, 3090 are not going to be a good choice for you. Um, pairing it with a very old CPU probably isn't going to net you much benefit. But if you have a CPU that was mid to high range within the last three to five years, you're probably fine pairing it with a 3070, a 3080, um, probably not a 3090. Um, but PCI Express 3.0, if you've got a good CPU, pair it with a newer graphics card and you're still going to see some gain. You're going to see gains over your older graphics card, especially if you're going something from something like an RX 580 to a 3070, uh, or even if you're going from a 5700 XT to a 3070 or a 3080, you will see some performance gains. Now, does that mean you're going to utilize all of the performance out of the card? Probably not. But when you look at the 6700K, for example, versus newer CPUs, the 10900K, uh, the 10850K, uh, or any of the current AMD CPUs, the 3600X, the 3700, the 3800, um, you're not gonna see a big performance difference between the older high-end CPUs and the current high-end CPUs, uh, just because their per-core performance is only different by between 4% and 12%. Um, the real gain, of course, being multi-core, adding more cores, going from four cores, eight threads, to six cores, 12 threads, for example, um, has a huge impact. Um, but at the end of the day, buy what you want. If you want to buy a 3070 RTX, then it'll be a good upgrade path for your system. Uh, and you can always upgrade your system around the new graphics card, but I wouldn't let uh, having a CPU that's a couple years old hold you back from getting a better graphics card. 
I think you'll still see decent performance gains in most games, unless they're very CPU intensive games. Um, and otherwise, you know, if you're running 1440p or 4K, you're obviously gonna see even less differences uh, going from a high-end CPU from two or three years ago to a high-end CPU today. So that's all I've got to show you today. Uh, once the 3070 comes in and the 3080, we'll do some tests on that and we'll see how those perform. Uh, we'll even go ahead and throw the 3070 or the 3080 back into a PCI Express 2.0, uh, or at least we'll try and we'll see how that works. So that's all for now. Thanks for watching.